The question we are asking is, is the 2G scam going to go to Beaufort's way? We have with us Dr. Subramaniam Swami, President of the Janta Party. He joins us from Chennai. Vikas Singh, former additional solicitor, General of India, he joins us from Delhi. Dr. Swami, the court today said that A. Raja cannot tamper with evidence. The entire evidence is documentary and is already in the custody of the court. Do you believe that it was fair to grant him bail pending trial? Well, I think he was, uh, uh, had all, qualified all the guidelines laid down by the Supreme Court in various judgments. Uh, it was time for him to be sent out on bail uh, because the trial is now in, in an advanced stage and I think by the end of this year we should expect to start expecting conviction. Right. So uh, I don't see why he should be kept in jail. Uh, till the date of the conviction. All right, Vikas Singh, I have a question though. You know, when Kani Muni was given bail, there was this grand reception for him in Chennai. People were dancing out there. When Rajas got bail today, we've seen pictures of sweets being distributed. Are these people accused people or are they heroes? People, you know, who are supporting a particular leader, and when the leader is getting released, so they are just showing their joy. So I don't think there is anything to do with an accuser or, or a hero. It's it's just that they are their supporters. So but does like it for disturb you to see those kind of pictures? family members. I don't think there is anything disturbing. If my view has been right from the beginning that this is not one of those cases where you can actually find any culpability. I mean, ultimately the child will show. When you decided the prices at which spectrum is to be given, that was not something. You you can see what is the prior recommendation now and how these telcos are now saying that the tariff is going to double up, etc. And the common man will be the ultimate sufferer. So in my view, I have always taken the view that fixing a low price for spectrum was a conscious decision of the government on the basis of a prior recommendation. <laughs> so that was not something which can be really said to be in that sense. Uh, an offence. Okay, that Dr. Has, that I, I, can, I can see Dr. Swami shaking his head over there. But Dr. Swami, I want to ask you one more question. You have said today that as per your information, there is serious danger to A. Raja's life outside of jail. Where and who is the danger coming to him from? Yeah. Well, first of all, let me say that uh, there were, the spectrum was not given in low prices in 2007 or 2008, it was uh, given uh, to uh, the first uh, uh, recipients of the uh, license uh, at a low price and then they went and sold it in the market. Uh, so there was a private auction mm -hmm. and, uh, and they paid the market price in the end. And that's wha what is the objectionable part. Okay. Uh, but where is so the threat to uh, A. Raja's now, life uh, coming the, from, Dr. Uh, Swami? Telecom companies are making a big noise about it for different reasons. Well, uh, it's coming from all those who are bigger players than him in this whole scandal and this scam. And uh, as we know and that Raja uh, knows earlier too on much? it was being propagated that Raja alone made these decisions. Uh, and Raja knows who, uh, we have already brought out at least one minister who participated in the decisions along with Raja and held meetings with him. I think there are others also who have given, patronized him. Uh, who gave him support and gave him nerve to oppose the Prime Minister when the Prime Minister wanted an auction to take place. People like who? So uh, these people would be worried because I am pretty sure there was a hefty bribe. Well, you want me to name names? Uh, I don't think that your channel would be able to sustain those three names. I am telling you in general terms. After all, his associate was also assassinated. And uh, the CBI has done practically nothing about the investigation. Okay, but, yeah, but Dr. Uh, Somi, I have a question of here. Dubai, if A. Raja really Dubai wanted to implicate upset, uh, certain uh, people, spoke. wouldn't he have implicated them by now? That is up to, uh, that is for us to see. I don't know. Uh, Raja may still be having hopes that he will be uh, bailed out. Uh, and they were, they, some of the lawyers are saying that this case is no future, it will wind up like Bofors. Uh, so he may live on hope, I can't say, but uh, certainly those others would not like to take a risk and they may, right. uh, they, they may do something to him. I know that there are people uh, uh, who have discussed these matters and uh, my friends uh, in various parts of the world have told me so.
Okay, so, so, so without naming the specific people, but you can tell us that these people from whom Raja is under threat are, are people in the political world, the corporate world or outside people? Well, there are uh, my, my, my multiple, there are of course political people, they are the main drivers in this. But uh, there will be people who uh, would feel that uh, this kind of exposure would mean that in future no bribery can be carried out, somebody will squeal. It's been an unwritten law amongst the mafia that those who squeal on these matters uh, should be killed. And you're so talking about a, bigger fish than Raja. You're so talking it, about people at a higher uh, level than Raja, bigger in, uh, fish Dubai. in the political firmament. Yes, uh, yes, absolutely. Much higher. Those who patronized him, who gave him confidence that he can go ahead and do what he did. Vikas Singh, in March 2011, and I think Dr. Swami referred to that two minutes ago as well, there was a mysterious death of one of his close accomplices, Sadiq Bacha, just before he was to be questioned by the CBI. Reportedly, he was a crucial link in the trail of the 2G scam. Um, how much do you believe that, you know, as Dr. Swami is saying, that there is some risk to Raj outside jail? Well, Ms. Dr. Swami seems to be having some inside information on this because I really can't comment on that whether there is any risk to his life or not. In fact, there was a lot of speculation. People were saying that Mr. Raja is not applying for bail. I mean, there were rumors going around because he was uh, expecting threat to his life. But that turned out to be untrue because he basically waited till the other public servants were given bail. Mm -hmm. And uh, when Mr. Chandolia and Behuja were given bail, it's that time he realized that now it's right for him also to apply for bail. Right. And he applied for bail. Now, if the theory that he was fearing threat to his life was there, he would not have applied bail even now. He would have remained inside. So I, he is probably not uh, fearing any threat to his life, and that's why he has applied for bail and Dr. come Swami, out. Dr. then so respond really to that. How come he applied theory. for bail now then, if, if, if there's a threat to his life? <laughs> I don't care what Raja thinks, whether he thinks there is a threat to his life or not. I think there is a threat to his life and uh, I have basing it on my, my information. Raja may be fooled into thinking that uh, there is no threat to his life and certainly those who would like to say, uh, silence him <laughs> would not like him to be in a protected place like a jail and maybe encouraging him to think that there is no threat to his life. Vikas Singh, uh, you know, there have been people, Dr. Swami also referred to that just now, the people believe the 2G case will go the Beaufort's way. Uh, the Tamil Nadu Chief Minister Jayalalitha also say, expressed the same sentiment today. What do you think? Well, um, I, I, I don't think it is proper to compare this to whether it can go the Beaufort's way or not. Because uh, evidence in both the cases were of a very different nature. But in this case, according to me, the way the hype was created and the way the media trial began and the way the CAG report came initially in making this a mother of all scams, uh, the trial court initially probably was a, a little, I, I think, swayed by all those uh, um, reports coming into the press and outside. And because of which initially, if you see, the trial court was very conservative. But later on, when Mr. Subramaniam Swami wanted Mr. Chidambaram to be made an accused, the trial court examined in great detail the evidence that was there in the departmental files and they said that yes, Mr. Raja has consulted Mr. Chidambaram and also took the view that a decision to keep the prices low was a conscious decision of the government. So really speaking, trial court, the judge, trial judge who is hearing the matter also has probably over a period of time understood the ramification of the entire sector because it's a very, very... Um, 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 you know, um, technical kind of a sector right. where uh, how the sector will grow, the government is to decide. And now the trial court is probably understanding how the sector has grown and, and what I have been saying right from the beginning probably is dawning now on the trial court and that is why everybody is out on bail and even Mr. Chidambaram, whom the trial court felt was definitely involved in the decision making process, still the trial court refused to make him an accused in the matter. Of course, Dr. Swami is unhappy with that as well and he's uh, filing the cases against that. But that's that's how the trial court has taken it. So, Dr. Swami, really so, speaking, these are, so, you know, so hard evidence. Let me put the same question to you. What is the fear? The well, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's a, that's a misrepresentation. That's a misrepresentation. What the court said is that I didn't prove there was a criminal intent on part of Chidambaram. Well, I'm sorry to say that the uh, trial court yes, yes, didn't but he was, know that there was a high court. But Mr. Chidambaram was involved. Of, uh, Runu Ghosh was the CBI, which says that... 
Well, no, no, wait a minute, please. The, the, the only court. objection that the trial court um, uh, ju judge said was that I didn't approve. Please let me listen. I mean, I, I, I don't think you have read the judgment because you're misquoting it. Uh, the fact of the matter is that the trial court judge said there is no criminal intent that I have shown on part of Mr. Chidambaram. Whereas in the case of Raja, we showed this bribery, this, that and all that. It was shown, so for, therefore Raja was made an accused. I pointed out that my charge of offence was under section 13, bracket 1, bracket D, part 3, which doesn't require criminal intent. And I, uh, uh, there is a High Court judgment, and which is uh, today before the Supreme Court. Now I have uh, argued this matter in the Supreme Court that as far as section 13, bracket 1, bracket D, part 3 is concerned, no criminal intent needs to be proved. The mens rea question doesn't arise. Right. That's why we have a separate act called the Prevention of Corruption Act, and it's not part of the IPC anymore. Okay. Uh, so I'll therefore, uh, uh, yeah. the, uh, let the Supreme Court pronounce on it whether the criminal intent is necessary. You can't, uh, you can't misquote the judgment saying that the court reviewed all the evidence and came to this conclusion. That's not what it came. All right. It okay, actually, what, uh, main Dr. Dr. Swami, I just, we just have one and a half minutes left. Decide together. Till yeah. that time, till that time, they were saying that uh, he was, was not. Okay, we just have one and a half minutes left. Very quickly, Vikas Singh, how do you overall assess the strength of the CBI case in the 2G case? Uh, and by when do you expect the trial could be concluded? Briefly, please. I, I, uh, I, I can't really take me, a call I on tell that you, I am not bothered about the Vikas case Singh. because I have a v v I have Vikas Singh. Yeah, I, I, I can't really tell comment you on that what I, happen Let me tell you that I am not bothered about the CBI evidence, case. I've got my own but, case. But from a, from a holistic point of view, if you ask okay, me from a holistic point of view or whatever I've read, from whatever I've read in the press, I don't think there is any case at all in this whole... Um, Okay. Except for okay. except very for quickly, Dr. Swami, could then this well, case I, therefore I'm go not, the Bofors way? About, uh, has changed the first I am, I say. am not bothered. I am not. I am not bothered about the CBI case. I have my own court case going, by, and I have a private complaint where Raja is an accused, and I want uh, Mr. Chidambaram to be made an accused. I want uh, some more people to be made an accused before I begin my proceedings. So the CBI case, let the CBI answer it. Yeah, but I Dr. Swami, uh, very quickly then, that. I'm concerned very case, quickly I'm then, you could the 2G case, case go the both ways way? The conviction should take place. No, because Bofors case was only executed by, uh, was prosecuted by the CBI, which is under the government. Here, the court monitoring is taking place, and two, I have a parallel case going along with the same time. All right. CBI is on its toes in this matter. All right, and uh, Dr. Swami, just in 15 seconds, Rajas and Bela, how do you assess his political future within the DMK? Well, the, the, the DMK itself has a very poor and bleak future. Um, and I think uh, Ms. Jailita should prove our bona fides by prosecuting the Shiva Ganga uh, election fraud instead of making comments about uh, people coming out on bail without even thinking or uh, studying the question. Right. Uh, the fact of the matter is the DMK lost because of 2G for which Ms. Jayalita's contribution was practically nil. It was all uh, done in Delhi and it was done largely by people right. like myself. And uh, today uh, in DMK is so thoroughly discredited it's going to take a long time for it to come up. All right, Dr. Subramaniam Swami and Vikas Singh, thank you both very much for joining us. Thank you, thank you, sir.